Welcome to Are You Afraid of Commitments? Don't misuse commit. Hey, I'm Eric, and uh, welcome to a hot afternoon here in British Columbia. Um, the inspiration for this video came from some code that crossed my uh, eyesight at some point, where somebody has placed a commit inside a uh, event subscriber, and and that had a lot of a uh, lot of impact on a lot of things. Um, but it actually also got me thinking about the way that Business Central is handling uh, uh, transactions, and uh, I thought uh, let's let's do a little video on that. Um, and I think we actually need to start in the application. Um, so now I'm somewhere more or less random in the in the application. I'm on the customer list, and. Uh, I can do stuff here. I can I can select stuff from the uh, the action bar. I can click on the record and so on. Whenever I have an opportunity, well, almost there. But let, let's define this as whenever I have an opportunity to interact with the system, then my session is not in a database transaction. We are outside. There's no transaction right now. If I do something, let's say that I'm going to hit delete here. At this point, I'm actually not in transaction, but as soon as I click delete and, and something happens, the transaction is working. If I go to the menu and do register customer payment, I'm not in a transaction now. I perhaps I were in a small transaction from I clicked from when I'm clicked that to this thing showed up. Um, I click OK. Something happens. Now we're back to not being inside a transaction. And if I go and say post payments, I'm now inside a transaction again. And actually, in this case, I got a breakpoint. Or oh, not a break my got an error. And if we check one of the recent uh, additions in local, we have a underscore ale exception. There's nothing to post. Uh, so we can actually from the debugger now see what the error is, which is pretty cool. Uh, at this point, we're still in the transaction, but we, we are in the transaction because the debugger has paused the operation. So now, because of an error, an error automatically always rolls back to transaction. And I need to hit it one more time for, I don't know why, I need to hit it five twice. And now we're out of the transaction again. So if we look at this from a code perspective, um, so let's, uh, let's create an action. In no, no, not like that because we're in the page extension. So I'll add first because that's how I roll process. We will add an action here test uh, caption equal test application area all. So now I create a trigger and I can do. We can we can just work on rec actually. So I can do and say rec dot name two equal format random one hundred, and I'll do a rec dot modify. So that's a piece of code, and clearly this piece of code writes to the database. But there's two things that we haven't done. So if I uh, I find my function here, uh, and I find my name two, which you can't see, but maybe I can get it so you can see this right there. It has a 14 in it. So I wrote to the database. So two things happened when we are talking since we're talking about transactions. First of all, a transaction was initialized. Also, 
a transaction was committed to the database, but I did not write either statements. So I did not write a some sort of init or begin transaction or whatever we would call it. Neither did I write commit because that happened automatically. If I now do this and I add the commit, we will it will look looks like that we will get the same thing. So if I used my come on, BD. If I use my test function here, it happened and uh, we there's no UI. What I actually got was two transactions. Well, nothing really happened in you know in the transaction here, but we we got a new transaction when we started our um, our process, and since we told the system to commit at this point, it was committed, and a new transaction was potentially started. I'm going to say potentially because maybe the platform is smart enough to say, ah, screw it, we don't need a, a transaction for this piece. But in reality, there's still a implicit commit when we're done here. So, so this commit was not necessary. If we're talking about comparing this to uh, other databases, an error here would be the equivalent of a rollback. So, so if I do an uh, do a, do an error, that will roll back whatever I did up here since the beginning of this transaction, meaning that since either the last commit or since whatever state I left, I started the operation in from a UI perspective. So whenever I start something in UI, I get a new transaction. And in, in if I get an error in that new transaction, means that I will roll back to the state when I last had user control. Um, so let's talk about the the thing that if I let's say that I create a code unit. So that's the thing that actually triggered this. So let's create a uh, subscriber and I'll create a uh, subscriber to to a table. <coughs> and the table I'm going to subscribe to is let's do sales. Um, sales line. How about that? And I will subscribe to how about on after validate event. Uh, and I'll select the random field, doesn't really matter. So now I have Guy, let's add in something and something. So, what happens if I add a commit here? Well, this commit will now get triggered in in a bunch of places. This commit get, could get could get triggered in uh, inside the uh, the posting routine. So, whenever Code unit 80 is moving from to be posted, to, uh, post the quantity to, no, what it's called. Let's see what the name are. <clears throat> quantity to invoice, for instance. And that, when you invoice, that goes over to invoice quantity. So if we place a commit here, we have placed a commit random place inside a lot of things. So in, in, in the case that came across my desk, um, what would happen was that if you post and everything went well, well, the only thing that happened was really that when you posted an invoice, it would technically get posted down to the database in two transactions but that was hard to see the impact of. But if an error happened in the second part, 
Then the first part would be committed, the second part would not be committed. So you have half postings in some ledgers and nothing in others and just one big mess. So unless you really, really, really know what kind of event you're subscribing to and you really, really, really need a commit there, you should never put a commit in an event subscriber. And I could take that even further and say, it's actually very, very rare that I do use commit in code. Um, there's a few few cases where I do use a commit. Uh, one of them is in a uh, in a root two functions routine where let's say we're posting something and we're sending emails. Uh, maybe it's okay. I want to post and make sure that's posted, and I commit that, and then it's okay for the emailing to fail for some reason. But that should not roll back the posting. There's a couple of other cases where you want to do something and then you want to open UI. As we, we talked about, when I'm in the UI, I, ha I cannot be inside a transaction. So if you want to do something, then you want to open UI, then you got to commit in order for that UI to be opened. Um, so those are typically the cases, but, but you should never be necessary to just you know throw in a random commit that's not how AL works anyway that's uh that's a little uh, little story on a uh, commit here from the the very very hot i think it's the hottest day yet in uh, the summer in british columbia uh let me know in the comments below how you use commit and uh, i will uh, Read all your comments and I'll see you in the next video. Or you can check out, wow, that did not go well. You can check out this one because that is a very, very good one. Perhaps even with commits. No, I don't think there's any commits there. See you.